Okay, friends, the cleanup struggle stops here. I'm gonna show you a quick and effective way to trace bitmap logos. So one of my biggest frustrations when I started using VCarve Pro had to be bitmap tracing. It drove me nuts with all the cleanup you had to do, and I found a simple method to convert those bitmaps easier so you had less cleanup. Uh, so let me show you what I mean about cleanup. Here, I got a, I got a setup here for you. So this is one of the logos I'm gonna be using for a client. It's Dylan's Double D, and it's a bar. And what he wants, I mean, he wants a shot ski made, and this is gonna be an epoxy inlay. But the problem is there's, there's a few different colors going on here, and even those colors have shading. So let's head on over to bitmap tracing where I can explain this a little better. I'm gonna click on bitmap tracing right here, and you can see this has 16 different colors listed, and there's all these different shades. Now I can narrow this down, I can go all the way down to two shades, but here's what happens. You see all of these little dots in here? Those are gonna be a problem because VCarve is gonna kind of just add those to the bitmap. Then you're gonna sit there cleaning all these up. Now this is a very simple one. You can imagine when this has uh, more detail to it, you get even more that you have to clean up. You don't wanna mess with that. So I would have to go in and highlight one, each one of these and delete it. Sometimes you can do them in groups, but when you're doing detailed, you, you can see quickly how this becomes monotonous. You have to clean up every one of these. What a pain. I didn't like that, so I tried to find a way to not do that, and I'm gonna show you that right here. So here we are with my client set of logos sent to me in a PDF. And I'm at canva.com. You can use any photo editor that you want, but I use this just because I have a subscription and it's great. All right, click on the image. I'm gonna do a crop because I only want to do the Dylan's Double D. Now that we have it all scaled up, the next thing that we're gonna do, click on the image. We're gonna go to edit image and we're gonna adjust this image. We're gonna wanna make this as black and white as possible. We wanna get rid of as many colors as we can. So I'm gonna bring up the brightness. I'm gonna bring up the contrast. I'm gonna drop the saturation. Um, let's go ahead and bring up the highlights. Let's drop the shadows. Maybe drop the blur a little bit or, yeah, that looks pretty good. That is black and white, my friends. Compared to what it was before, this is nice. What we do now is we're gonna take this and just download it. So, download, and what I do is I'm gonna do it as a PNG. You can do it as a SVG, but it only works half the time. I found PNG is clear enough, and I can also, with the PNG, at least here, I can do it with a transparent background. Very helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that and uh, I'll save this to my computer and we'll see you back in Vetric. So here we are in Vetric and this is uh, VCarve Pro and you can do this in Aspire too. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and here I have the dimensions set up so this is just your job set up. I'm not gonna go through that. So we're gonna go right here to import bitmap. We're gonna click on the one that we made there it is, Dylan's Double D. And right here, I named it DD Inlay for the layer, and then there's the bitmap layer. And we wanna be on the DD Inlay layer. Make sure that's highlighted. All right, and I like, to, and you click on it, make sure this is dark. Come over here to trace bitmap. Click that button. Look at that. There are all 16 of these colors, just like we had before but they're all different shades. But when we drag this doll all the way down, look at that, there's a black color and a white color. We're gonna click on that black color. Perfect. You can see here, it's completely different than before. There are no little boogers in here in the way that we have to clean up later. None. That's the beauty of changing this to black, as black and white as you can. All right, so let's go down here. We're gonna do preview. We're gonna hit apply. And then we're gonna Close this puppy out. We're gonna drop down, we're gonna turn off the bitmap layer. Look at that, that is beautiful. My lines were pretty thick, so I'll double them up. That's just a matter of quick cleanup. I'll do that right now. Then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all the vectors, and group them all. All right, and then I'm gonna click up here. When I click up there, move my head out of the way. What we want to do is we want to do material setup. Always double check everything. I'll leave it here for you to look at. Check it out if you need to, but that's what I always use. I hit OK. All right, this is an inlay. So we need to go to Pocket Toolpath. 
And I have it all set up here. All we have to do now is calculate. Oh, after I select vectors, select the vectors and then calculate. Brought them all up. Now I'm gonna preview all in this situation. Uses the 1 8th end mail to cut everything out. Then it jumps right to that 16th and you can start seeing the detail. Check this out, it's all cut out now. And you can see there's some depth to it. That's all gonna get filled with epoxy and it's gonna look awesome. Okay, just for those who wonder, I'm gonna click right here. This tells us the time frame. Yep, it's gonna take us 45 minutes, which is absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with that. Small and detailed. Okay, so finally we're just gonna go and uh, right here and we're gonna save everything and I'll see you at the Onefinity machine. I'll show you cutting this out and we'll see what it looks like. 